Jared Sabal, Master of None, Real Life Iron Man Rocket Launcher Build, Part 7. Alright, this time it gets kind of serious. I have a lot of things to do because, once again, I need to do some rework. have to get this right because it's JB Weld and this will be nearly impossible to take off if I screw this up. There we go. It's on. And now that comes up and hits it. Bam. And stops it right at the level it's supposed to be at. Now I just need to let that set up because epoxy sets up. It doesn't dry. Hmm. All right, well, trying to figure this out, I just did a bunch of things that were wrong and didn't work. And then I realized my rule, the path of least resistance. So instead of trying to make two control arms, which wasn't working at all because I can't, I don't have the tools or maybe the skill to make the tolerances tight enough to make that actually work. It was just too sloppy and it wouldn't direct the panels. I also realized that trying to direct the panels to move very smoothly just outside of the armor that goes around the arm would be extremely difficult also. So path of least resistance, I'm going for a passive system of guidance. So I'm going to let the side panels slide on the armor with only one point of movement and one point of rotation. So I made these little brackets uh, that are stronger than what I was making before because they're bent at a 90, so they have a little more structural integrity. And then I made these brackets uh, that are drilled through that will mount onto the side panels and hopefully this makes it stiff enough that when it pushes it out to the outside, it keeps it relatively close to being in shape. And then when they come together, I'm going to put little guides on them so that it holds them together. Right. All right. Now let's see if me eyeballing where this stuff should be located worked out and I can actually mount those side panels on permanently. This panel fits awesome. I eyeballed drilling those holes and this lines up perfectly so I don't even have to mess with this to get this one on there. I just need to glue it in place. This one is almost there. All right, they're ready. Now it's moment of truth. I need to prep them and get it roughed up so that it sticks permanently when I put these things on with epoxy. <sighs> I'd be lying if I said I wasn't scared right now. So now I'm disconnecting these two servos and that way I control just the side servos. And I'm gonna move them out from the whole way in just a tiny bit. That way when I attach them to the side panels, they aren't, uh, you know, sprung in slightly because then when it would close they would have a gap it would sit out a tiny bit so i'm gonna instead of having them the whole way in i'm gonna have them just a tiny bit out you know like right there that way i can glue them on and it'll pull in nice and tight and hold everything together and i'm using jb quick weld to put these on epoxy is awesome If you're holding something while you're waiting for your epoxy to set up, check what you mixed it on and see if that's hard yet. Because once that's hard, this is hard. And then you know it's set up. Okay. Moment of truth here. While I'm waiting for this to set up, I was wondering if you guys like these long multi-part build series where you get to follow along with me and see all the problems that I have, or if you want me to just skip over all the problems and do a longer video showing you how I did it. I feel like this gives you guys a chance to see the actual build process and inspires you to build more because you get to see how much I screw up and not just see what I did right and that way you just think that I'm awesome. I feel like it's kind of conceited to keep those parts out. 
Let me know in the comments what you think. If you want me to continue these, I'll do these. If you don't, then the next build I will, uh, I'll just do the build. I won't tell you all the crap that I did wrong and I'll just show you the final product that works and you won't know all the trouble that I went through for it. Let me know. Now the shape of the armor and the way it's put together changes pretty substantially in different scenes throughout the movie. And that one is probably the most different. Uh, you can see there's no wrist plate protection there and the actual armor piece is shaped totally different because in other scenes, that armor is not recessed at the top, it's straight across right there, just like that. And then here you can see that it comes back just beyond this point, right? That little, where it comes down. So I'm gonna try to follow this one as much as possible because that's the scene that I'm replicating. And I'm going to make the bottom part detached from it. So that top plate is gonna be the entire guide section. It'll come back just below that, but it'll be cut off straight across the bottom. That way I can attach another panel to it. That way you can get your arm in and then put the other panel on and you'll have access to electronics and that kind of stuff inside there. I'm gonna use a piece of poster board to mock this up. I just realized that I have another issue which is going to make this more difficult. I was gonna to try to make that piece that everything is built on flexible so that it squeezes your arm but it changes the shape of everything else slightly whenever it, uh, you know, whenever it moves. So I need to take this clampy part that's supposed to squeeze your arm and hold it steady and rivet it together so that it does not move so that I can get this stuff attached correctly and it'll all stay rigid. And then I'll just have to make it slightly tight so that it squeezes my arm a tiny bit whenever I put it on and if somebody else is gonna wear it like uh, the hacksmith. We're gonna have to try to either squeeze it on his arm or if his arm is smaller than mine, which I, he looks like he's pretty jacked. I don't know if that's gonna happen. Um, now that I have this bracket on, I'm not able to put it on my arm that I cast anymore. So I just took a little piece of paper and I'm gonna hot glue it to it so that it holds it for me so I can still work on it without having to hold the thing up. I'm using hot glue because this stuff is temporary. It's really easy to take it off. Now I've got my template cut for the front piece of armor, so I'm gonna shape this and try to mount it. It's fit really close. So I'm gonna mount it now and see if I can fix it a tiny bit after it's mounted. I have the two main armor pieces formed now and they're basically ready except for sanding before they get painted. And I need to set up my permanent mount points for the top piece because that's not gonna be removable. And I'm gonna use more JB steel stick, which I already put some on to hold it in place, but now I'm gonna put more to try to make it very consistent and permanent where it's located. I built these mount points earlier, but you can't see it because it's inside and it's too dark. So those are what I made earlier. I need to make more of those. See, JB steel stick doesn't stick very well. See? I'm kind of on a roll with the armor right now, so I decided to go ahead and make that third piece since I can and I'm gonna use poster board to mock up the piece that I need to cut out of the Kydex, and I'm gonna shape it and make that and fit that on because this is going pretty well right now compared to everything else that I've run into. This piece has ended up being harder than I thought it would be because of the way it curves. Sucks. Huh. 
I went back and watched the movie again and realized that the shape that I was making is a little bit off. So I'm gonna change it again. <sighs> All right, after much shaping, I think this piece is done. This should be the final fitment. Still gotta take more off. <laughs> Looks good. I'm gonna do a little more shaping and then permanently mount it. Well, temporarily permanent. Permanently make the permanent mounts to mount it temporarily. Yeah. I wanted to put some curve in it. And I got it. Hopefully it looks good whenever I paint it. It's just one area that I have to recess on here for the elbow dropout area so you can bend your arm. Now it's time to mount it. And that means it's time for a huge shout out to Dan, my first and only Patreon patron for buying me this tube of JB Steel Stick. Without you, I wouldn't be able to attach this to this. Thanks, man. All right, now that that's mounted, the next step is to take all this stuff off and finish it and paint it. And after I get it all finished and painted, then I can permanently mount this piece and this piece, and then I can start doing electronics. To make sure that you catch it next time because it'll be basically done, or I might finish it in the next video. Nah, f it. Next time, I'm gonna finish this thing. Subscribe if you haven't already, and make sure to turn notifications on, that way you know when the videos come out. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time when I finish this thing in the next video. I promise. Back from the dead.